your choice to uh, research trust um, as essentially the backbone. You know, you you came up with that, I believe, in the book yep. more more so than anywhere I've read. Um, I've heard the blockchain compared to the internet. Internet was a transfer of information. Blockchain is a is ability to transfer value. Yep. There's different people have different like paradigm ideals around yep. the blockchain. You came up with this very unique perspective of trust. Um, how did that, you know, how did I guess your career up to that point yeah. or your your research up to that point? give you that wow moment that it's you know trust is is the backbone of what the blockchain is all about mark you are asking a question that is getting to the core of my ethos and i don't think anyone's ever asked me this question before and i've never answered it before publicly so but i will answer it um there was a point where i got to a vantage point where i can see commerce <laughs> And it wasn't because I was senior or, or an executive or well accomplished. I had played in the financial markets, in the risk markets, in the pharmaceutical markets, in entrepreneurship, in large companies, in academia. I, 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 had, I had been able to see a vantage point or have a vantage point of view. And I remember very clearly where I looked at the whole thing and go, holy crap. It's completely disenfranchising. You know, there are large segments of commerce and government are just taking advantage of other people. Yeah. And I didn't necessarily, I'm not like a conspiracy theorist or a revolutionary or a super liberal. I was just, I was just like, oh man, the whole system's kind of rigged, yeah. you know? And I didn't come from a place where I was comfortable knowing that a rigged system is okay. Right? I didn't grow up where the rigged system benefited me. I sort of hacked the system through yeah. where I was one of the ones being disenfranchised and kind of hacked my way through. Mm -hmm. And when I got to that point, I was like, oh, man, I, I really got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I cannot spend the next 20 years of my life continuing to rig an already rigged system. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was enlightening for me. The other thing is I started to think about what are my strengths and how can I make a difference? Right? Again, I don't have a platform of uh, family or history or political connections or anything like that. How could I make a difference? And I landed on this chart about seven years ago that I drew. Um, uh, uh, I don't even remember what led me to drew, draw the chart. But I was starting to look at how people had changed commerce over time. And what we had done is we had reduced transaction costs significantly over time. Okay, And what we had done is we had increased transaction speed significantly over time. So we're reducing transaction costs, increasing transaction speed. But transaction trust was left to fall mm -hmm. to the bottom. Okay. Okay. And I started to look at, like, what is the trust in a transaction? What is it that Uber did that allowed us to trust a complete stranger? And how did they go about it? By the way, they're going to record it. History is going to reflect Uber as one of the most distrusted trans you know, yeah. companies in the world, right? Um, Although at first when they were built. Initially, nobody, yes. Nobody trusted them. Right. 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 Like, but but how, how did they hack trust, right? And you look at Etsy and you look at Airbnb and you look at, at all the things that we depend on now and, and trust. And I realized that there was not a systematic method or at least agenda around making sure that we can continue to trust transactions over time. Mm -hmm. And so I latched onto that going, okay, I get it. So there's been transaction speed, which has gotten faster and faster, transaction costs, which has gotten lower and lower, but who's really solving for transaction trust? And I love the fact that you call blockchain a discovery because blockchain was a discovery for me in the midst of some soul searching where I was trying to figure out how do I help unrig the system? <laughs> okay, or at least slowing the rigging of the system. I land on this protocol and I'm like, oh man, this really works well together. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, back to the discovery, I feel like the technology was invented. Yep. But the blockchain, like... What it really does for us, discovered. right? What it really does for us uh, was a bit of a discovery for me. You know, I, I wish, I wish, you know, like we could find the two dozen people who are thinking about it as deeply as I was three years ago and kind of see how each other were thinking about it, right? I'm pretty sure trust came up 
I'm pretty sure trust was a core component of it. Um, I chose to make trust mm -hmm. the front and center of it. Again, because of that vantage point where I looked at the system and went, it's kind of rigged. Yeah. Does it really have to be that way? Again, does it really, do we really need a mousetrap, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of grow up and you're, I, I think at first when you're young, people are generally optimistic. And as you get older, you're, you become optimistic <laughs> because you learn right. that the system is rigged and you learn, you, you just learn things yep. as you go on, right? Uh, yep. So I do love that the, the blockchain uh, will hopefully provide in our future the ability uh, to have, you know, like we're talking about all this time, to, to the ability to verify anything and uh, things that you understand to be true or immutable yep. when it's recorded on the blockchain. Uh, yep. It's just, it's a, it's a great, it, it's incredible. Um, I want to, we're, we're going to end soon. Um, I want to pose to you a social question. Okay. And this came from one of our supporters is Propelify, the, okay. Pro the Propelify Innovation Festival that's held uh, close to here in Hoboken, New Jersey, okay. right here in, in May. Um, Aaron Price runs it. Uh, he came up with, so he has this platform that he's, he, he now calls Propelify Insiders, and, and we all chat on there, and it, it's a good group. Uh, he proposed a what I believe he called a hack for humanity, and he's mm -hmm. going to do this every once in a while when social issues come up yep. to try to get people to think about it. And I wanted to pose this to you. The last one that he came up with was uh, in light of the gun violence that has been gripping our country. Um, can the smart people that are in the tech industry, the entrepreneurs, the, the big thinkers, do you have a solution yeah. to the gun problems in America. And I know you, I, I'm hitting you with this. I haven't, I haven't mentioned it to you. Um, but as I was driving up here before the interview, I started thinking about this question, like, can the blockchain help with this solution? I mean, obviously you can inventory guns through, yep. through the blockchain and things yep. like that, but how could you, you know, how do you know about the illegal guns or how do you know about the people that won't register the guns and, how, and it, it kind of goes, yeah. I guess, to the authentication of art. So yeah. If I know, but guns are not unique. Um, so, yeah. is there? Do, do you? So, is there anything you could do that with the blockchain? Something this, about guns. This is super, super interesting. Um, first of all, uh, I've never heard of Propeller Propellify. Propellify, yeah. Um, I, we came up with Geek Street. This is like Propeller Head yeah. Street, right? Um, so. I'm glad that I'm glad that this is going on because you could tell. While I wasn't born in Jersey, I was raised in Jersey. I'm a Jersey guy. I think we're going to be the Silicon Garden, and anything Jersey, I'm for it. Like that's part of the reason I'm sitting down with you. Um, the second is, um, you know, it's funny. You've raised two examples that my students are working on. Okay. So one of the groups in the class is specifically working on a hack for for gun, gun the gun issues. issues. Okay. Um, I've already warned them that it's too big and audacious of, a, yes. of, a, of an ask. But it's, it's college, and, and that's what you're supposed to do, right? right? Um, so, you know, I think, I think the gun issue itself, um, there, there's two point of views that I'm going to share with you. Uh, one is that from a blockchain perspective, it's not just democratizing trust, it's democratizing power. Right, so a lot of governments that I've that I've had conversations with, and by the way, governments are more interested in blockchain than corporations. Oh, yeah. And it's not because governments want to put themselves on a blockchain. That's not the case. What governments want to do is they want to go, hey, you guys, they want to shape policy, mm -hmm. and say, you guys, you, your compliance documents that you sent to me, those lie infested Excel files and Word documents, I don't want them anymore because I know you're lying. Okay. okay, you found the best set of lies. That will represent you as compliant. I want to see it on a blockchain, right? <laughs> That's why governments are interested. Um, issues around large social contracts, you know, constructs such as gun control, um, are not solved because one side is smarter than the other or one side has a better solution than the other. They're solved because of equality of power and partnerships, right? If if the government doesn't want to do this, it's not going to happen. 
Mm -hmm. Right. And if, if commerce wants to do it by ourselves, it's not going to happen either. We don't have a lot of examples in the world where, you know, commerce has been able to solve for something uh, fantastic that government was, was lagging on. I think it's a conversation that we have to have. So to the extent that blockchain can help in that power imbalance, mm -hmm. right, I think there's probably some distributed power structures and power centers that, would, that might be able to help that. What it, where I do think blockchain can help, to specifically the gun issue, is around identity and past history, right? One of the things that we have when you have identity data and reputational data on a blockchain is not so much, yes, it is that it's trusted and it's verifiable and you can see it, but it's the ability for unfamiliar nodes in the network that are not familiar with each other to be able to access that data and trust it as well, mm -hmm. right? There is a perfect copy of your identity somewhere in the digital world. There is a perfect copy of your reputation somewhere in the digital world. The issue right now is that there's so many imperfect copies of it all around the place and different people are taking different views of it. Right. When we can put things like identity and reputation in a centralized location where unfamiliar parties, a random gun shop in Idaho somewhere, okay, that doesn't have the most sophisticated technology systems in the world, but just like they can swipe a credit card to see whether you're, you have a balance or not, they can swipe your identity card to make sure that you are who you are and your reputation is who you are we're going to start to see some of the edges of the problem start to come out, right? Yes, at the core of the problem is whether you should have guns or not, but at the edge is who should have them. So I think there are, there are implications of technology to solve for some of those periphery stuff, mm -hmm. but the crux of the matter is a social political issue. Right. So, I mean, one way to attack it, as you're saying, is identify the people and their, <coughs> their issues and history and things like that. Right. It's not so much the guns, it's the people. It's about having centralized data that we all agree is right, that we all have access to, right? Now, this will be my last, my last statement. I think we're, going, we're running over a little bit, but we, we're going to wrap it. Like, uh, you know, I, I, you know, if you go to TSA and you try to get TSA pre, or you go to Global Entry, you try to get Global Entry as a traveler, mm -hmm. if you have a DUI on your record, they know right away and you're not given it. Right. Bar none. Like in seconds, they know that you had a DUI when you were 21, 22, and you don't get TSA pre and you don't get global services. Right? They have, a, they have a centralized copy of the data. We don't have a decision as to whether that's right or not, but they could control it, and they have access networks across the board instantaneously. But you can go buy a gun in certain parts of the country where the mechanism to test your identity and your reputation is simply not there. Right. That's where the technology uh, comes in and helps. So I think we can help on the periphery. But the pure social political aspect of whether guns should be owned in the first place or not right. is something that we're going to have to use our traditional methods of politics uh, in order to solve for. Uh, just real quick, you mentioned earlier in this conversation as well um, about we're going to know the histories of, of everybody. You know, you can't change things on your resume and things like that. Um, does that... And that's great for people that want to verify information about you, right. outsiders. But you want a second chance on things. You made yeah. a mistake when you were young. Yep. How is that going to affect people? Because um, now everything's, you know, the future will be verifiable on the blockchain. I can't get a second chance anymore. Yeah. Kind of. You know, you know is that well, it's, it's sort of, it's, again, it's an intellectual cousin to the notion of young people are posting all sort of stupid stuff on social media right now, yeah. thinking that they can go delete it 10 years from now. Yeah. Right. Recognizing that delete just means delete it from me being able to see it. It doesn't mean that it's completely gone. Right. Um, so I do, th I do think we're going to have um, some, some of that, uh, which is how do we solve for um, rehabilitation? Right. Um, and, and how do we really think about how we consume some of this stuff? But we, we can't even start to have the conversation today because we, we don't even have a data set right. that we can look at and say, yes, this, this is the data set that, that we're all at least going to agree on is, is the facts, you know, before we start. So I think, I think um, again, uh, I go back to this exciting time that we're in where hundreds of millions of us, for the first time in a species, in, in the history of our species, can have these types of discussions about something as fundamental as blockchain. Right. 
Right. And, and we're going to have a lot of stuff that we're going to have to pontificate about. And, and quite frankly, I don't think there are good answers to many of the questions right now. But what is undeniable, what is undeniable is that we have an improper fraction in the marketplace between transparency and trust. And again, what I'm loosely coupling being bending over the consumer over the barrel. And I think the, that is uh, we're sitting on the precipice of a revolution. Right. And, and I, I think revolutions happen when you have three things in place. One, there's a simple argument that there's a better way. OK. In the argument that data comes to us today completely line fested and says, trust me, you can trust me. And data will come to us in the future and say, I'm data. Here's a quick algorithm to test whether I was maneuvered or not, or manipulated or not. That's a better way. It's hard to argue that that's not a better way. To me, that's the first ingredient of a revolution. Okay? The second ingredient of a revolution is that the hands is in the power of the young. Very quick, very rarely do you see the elderly of our species creating revolutions. Right. Okay? And this is one of those times in our history where the young not only have the spending power, the future spending power, which they always had, or they always have, but they also have right at their fingertips, literally, the ability to reconstruct commerce and take us into this trust economy where the incumbents don't have a good defense mechanism because it is trust that is the differentiator. Yeah. And that's the second ingredient of a revolution. The third is the revolutionaries have to believe that things will happen quickly. Like no one, no one starts a revolution today because 100 years from now we want something better, right? right? You want to see benefits within your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the speed at which blockchain is moving at and the amount of coverage that we're seeing and the size of the, pop, uh, the, size of the segment of our population that are talking about it is telling me that we're going to see changes in our lifetime. And when you see those three things line up, whether you're on Wall Street, you're a private equity investor, you're a VC, you're the Pope, or you're a startup person, you have to look at it, and you will be really, really, really misjudging it if you don't realize that there's a revolution in front of you. Right. And you call it, in the book, you call it institutional revolution. I do, because so. I think the nature of the institution is going to change fundamentally. So that's great. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time today, um, you know, as it... You know, in conclusion, it seems like as the technology evolves, um, we definitely are going to have to also think about those moral, cultural, ethical uh, issues as we go along and hopefully don't think about that in hindsight. We do it concurrently with as the technology evolves. Um, but you have brought a lot of great points to us today. Um, everybody, please read Richie's book. Blockchain Trusted Companies. Uh, it's available on Amazon. And any final words for the uh, for the group? It's a 2017 Block and Coin Summit, Navigating the Crypto Economy. Final words is I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. Um, whenever you guys do this again, if I could, if I would be so lucky to be re, re invited, um, I will try my best to be there. And you know, uh, final thought: um, Jersey Silicon Garden. Love it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, this. mate. All right. All right.